Yeah, hello, Ralph McIntyre with Astro Map Links. Well, I'm here to do another video in my video series, Ask an Astrologer. Magdalena asks about Saturn conjunct Mars and Mercury in Pisces in the fourth house. And she's also talking about Moon in the third house in Aquarius. All right, for all you new people, please click like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. It certainly helps me promote my channel. In the description below, you're going to find links to my websites where you can find all my offerings and also a link to get a reading with me where I dive deep into helping you understand the evolutionary intent of your birth chart. All right, without further ado, let's dive into this. So I want to start here with the fourth house because I think this is going to help uh, you. And I want to say Sonia, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that name right. I'm terrible sometimes with names. Is also having the same placement talking about it. So I want to dive into the fourth house. So the first thing I want to say is remember your soul incarnates with these placements because you need these lessons to learn. So whenever you have a big fourth house, and if you have Saturn, Mars, and Mercury there, you have a big fourth house. Your soul's here to learn how to nurture itself. Remember, traditionally speaking, the fourth house is home and family. But from a traditional perspective, this used to be much more the case on the planet when we were a little more in survival mode. But as we evolve, as the planet evolved, the home and family or the family aspect of that isn't necessarily your natal family. Really what we're looking here is how we nurture ourselves. Let me say this again, because I think it deserves to be repeated. The fourth house is how and where we nurture ourselves. Now, some people want their family close and some people want their family on another continent. And so we have Pisces there. So Pisces is all the unseen things of the world. It's all the, so to speak, things that are going on behind the scenes. And so as a soul, we need to be really cautious of what's going on behind the scenes and are they nurturing us? Does the psychic space you inhabit nurture you? Are you letting things into that psychic space because you feel like you have to? Or are you keeping it safe for you? Remember, your chart is here for you. This life is here for you. It's your karma. It's not your family's karma. It's not your parents' karma. It's not anyone but yours' karma. So, obviously speaking, some of us have some fairly challenging early childhood. And not to say that that's not difficult to integrate into life, but there's other aspects of life beyond that. And so on some level, stepping beyond that is important. Remembering from a Piscean perspective, there is nothing that's concrete. Time is kind of not linear, so to speak. We can be before and after the same moment in time from a Piscean perspective. So kind of stepping beyond the physical limitations of your early childhood is one way to look at it. And so we got Saturn there, effort over long periods of time, good boundaries, physical boundaries, Mars and Mercury being willing to kind of assert your voice to protect yourself is one way of looking at this. The more you kind of focus on what psychically protects you, what keeps you feeling safe, willing to kind of use that Mars to kind of upset the apple cart, the Mercury, the way you think, the way your mind works, the way you communicate. And then furthermore, you know, bringing that moon in Aquarius in the third house of, you know, letting go of the effects of other people, kind of being a little detached from other people's emotional state. So kind of putting this all together, it's like, are you kind of psychically protecting yourself, asserting your needs and not getting caught up with other people's 
uh, effect, so to speak. Don't get too caught up on how other people are reacting to it. Remember, this is your life. You deserve to be nurtured from a psychic level. And this is something new. Remember, anytime you have a placement in your chart, it's because your soul needs these lessons. And so you ask about, I wonder what my soul wants to achieve. Peace, harmony is one thing. You know, if you think about that higher evolution of coming back to the divine and connection, well, it requires kind of feeling safe in your own body, you know? And so you're in the process of allowing yourself to feel safe in your own body. And one of the aspects about feeling safe in your body is the psychic space. You know, it's so interesting for me. I'm a big kind of Neptunian, Piscean, kind of Scorpionic person. And so once I realized how much the energetic world affects me, and then once I started to protect myself and once I started to kind of live my life according to what I knew about myself, you know, and watching what I kind of put myself in front of, who I let into my space, you know, how I, how often do I keep my psychic space clear? So on my playlist, if you go to the, my YouTube channel and you click on the playlist, there's a meditation playlist and there's a couple videos in there about psychic clearing and psychic space. Um, one's a candle meditation, one's a clearing meditation. I would recommend both of those videos for you. And remember, the more you can kind of, you know, use the physical reality, Saturn, to help protect that psychic reality, Pisces. Interestingly enough, I have Saturn in Pisces myself. Mine's in the sixth house, but it, it, it's, it's an interesting placement, you know, because you can't necessarily go to the normal, so to speak, society to look at Saturn when it's in Pisces, because it's a very different beast, so to speak. You know, your goal is to kind of put structure in your spiritual practice, your spiritual realm. And that's another aspect of the fourth house and Saturn and Pisces. What kind of spiritual practice? How much time do you spend in the spirit world, so to speak, connecting in and doing it in a way that nurtures you? You know, once I started to realize that, once I started to become much more disciplined with my spiritual practice, things became much easier for me. And particularly once I realized how permeable I am in the psychic realm. And this is kind of the aspect that I would talk for both you ladies is like, think about your house, think about the four walls of your house, but think about the four psychic walls of your house. You know, how much do you let come in? You know, it's funny. I've talked about this before where people will talk about, you know, protecting themselves, you know, going and so to speak, uh, closing up the house. But then they, you know, turn on the YouTube or turn on the Facebook or turn on the Instagram or Twitter or whatever. And they let all this psychic energy come right through the walls. And for you with Saturn in the fourth house in Pisces, learning how to kind of have a home that is psychically peaceful for you is, is your soul's goal. I mean, on some levels, you ask what, what my, wonder what my soul wants to achieve a home that is psychically peaceful. Remember, from a soul perspective, you're here to learn this. It's something that's new for you. Be curious to where your south and north node are to help you kind of get a deeper understanding of this. And I presume your sun can't be too far away from that Mercury. So it's either third, fourth, or fifth house. So it's that all that, so to speak, below the horizon, that internal process. That is what your soul's here to do. Remember, this is your life. This is your chart. You deserve psychic peace in your home and in your body. All right. I hope you find this video helpful. Please click like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell and have a spectacular evening.